There are a lot of roguelike games out there on the PS4, and there's a new one called Leap of Fate that throws its hat into the ring. But is the card stacked in favor of this game, or should it just leap off the nearest building? Leap of Fate is a roguelite with a mix of cyberpunk aesthetic and magic thrown into the mix. The game has a card system that it uses in order for progression, and every time you play, of course, the game, it will be a slightly different setup. Being that it is roguelite, that means that if you end up dying and game overing, you do get one more shot to come back, but after that, you'll have to start the game over from the beginning. The game features four playable characters, though unfortunately there's no multiplayer involved here. Each character plays a bit different with their weaponry, but unfortunately you don't have all four characters at your disposal from the get-go. You start off with one, and as you complete missions for one, you'll unlock the next, completing missions for that character will unlock the next, and so on. After selecting your character, you get dropped into the world and go to a table where a set of cards are played out, which represent the first level. You'll have to start off with the top card, and when you complete that card, it'll then unlock the cards connected to it, eventually making it to wherever the guardian of that particular level is located. Defeating the guardian or boss of that particular level will allow you to progress to the next one. Though, the placement of the guardian isn't always at the very bottom. It could be somewhere in the middle mixed up, which gives the game a unique feel every time you play. The other cards range from having combat-like scenarios where you have to defeat a wave or two of various enemies and then get to go to the next card, as well as things like upgrading and shops. The game features two different styles of upgrades, ones that are permanent that you have to complete missions in order to get. Every time you enter into the game or enter into a new level, you'll have new objectives, and if you're able to complete them, you'll start to unlock these permanent upgrades, and these include the other unlockable characters. The other upgrades aren't permanent and change up every time you play, and you'll have to spend these soul points in order to get it, which is basically the game's money. You also have to get to an upgrade card amongst the ones on your playfield in order to do so. The upgrades are broken into three different skill trees, and you have to get to the right upgrade card for that particular set of skills in order to upgrade it, so it's kind of stingy. There are also gears that you're able to find to get more upgrade cards, as well as a few other cards that you'll be able to select from using these types of items, as well as you get a free upgrade once you complete one of the levels. One thing that I like is when you're going through the progression of the cards, you can actually backtrack and go to a previous card, such as an upgrade one in case you didn't have enough money to buy the upgrade you wanted, or one of the shops, or even one of the combat sequences that you've already completed. Let's say you do one, you have full health then, and you have a couple extra health drops, but then you make it a little bit farther into that particular level, and you've lost some health. You can go back and re-grab that health, which is cool, though, of course, once you move on to the next level, the card's completely reset, so make sure you grab everything before you end up moving on to that next stage. And even when you complete a boss, you actually have to stand in a glyph in order to activate the cutscene for the next level. So you still have opportunity once you defeat the boss to go back and make sure you've cleaned up everything in that particular set of cards. The game's combat is smooth. Once you kind of get used to aiming and firing with the R2 button, or slashing, depending upon which character you're using. You also have R1, which will be the character's special abilities that you have a limited number that you can use, and you can also recharge if you have lightning bolts available to use. You can actually get different ones, though, as the game progresses, though you always default back to whatever your default one is once you end up game overing or starting a new game. There's also the Shadow Walk ability that you can use with L1 to kind of teleport quickly around the area. Once again, you'll still have to use charges in order to do these, and each character has a different version of it. One character creates clones of themselves and it distracts enemies, and another one causes explosions once they come out of it. While the game isn't extremely long, like many roguelike games, the whole experience is playing and replaying until you finally get that perfect build so that you'll be able to complete the game. And it gets tough. Once you're able to get past the first couple of levels, the enemies increase in difficulty, and there's even a hard mode to unlock once you complete it for the first time normally. From the technical side of things, the game didn't crash on me, but there was some slowdown from time to time. And in fact, the game even froze on me for just a couple of seconds when certain enemy maneuvers would end up happening. Lebel Fate is available now on the PlayStation 4 and PC for $9.99, and it does feature a full trophy list and a platinum. While the PS4 is being oversaturated with roguelike games, it's hard to deny that Leap of Fate is another solid one. There's a decent amount of content here, as well as strategy of figuring out what works best and the different playable characters. I do wish there was a tad bit more, maybe some multiplayer thrown in, but overall, for the price tag, you're getting a very solid roguelike experience for sure. 
With everything said, I'm going to be giving Leap of Fate an 8 out of 10. But anyway, guys, it's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.